listener, and welcome to yet another episode of Friday Night Chill with Will. I'm Will. Uh, hope you guys have been having a good week. Mine has been pretty good. Cannot complain. And I'm excited to bring you yet another week of, uh, of discussion or whatever. I uh, just want to say thank you uh, to everyone who listened to last week's episode. Uh, that was one of the best performing episodes in a hot minute. Um, especially considering it was something not, uh, ranger focused, which, um, meant, meant a lot to me. It was a lot of confirmation, uh, that I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And I appreciate that. Uh, some of you even DM'd me and, um, on different things and commented, uh, just talking about how much you enjoyed the episode. And I'm really happy to hear that. Because that's what I want the show to be. I want it to be something good for you all and something you all can uh, possibly take something away from. So uh, tonight we are going to be uh, talking about something, um, I, I guess, pretty pretty serious. And um, I'm not uh, not sure the best way to go about this. I'm going to try my best uh, to to go about this topic in the most respectful way possible. Um, let me preface this like last week. Uh, you know, I don't mean any ill intent uh, or anything like that. Um, I'm just trying to share my perspective and um, hopefully that is helpful or uh, insightful for someone to hear. And yeah, that's just kind of all I'm doing. So tonight we are going to be talking about kind of being overwhelmed and and being and feeling helpless. And we're going to talk about that because tonight I'm going to be talking about kind of the stuff going on in Palestine and Gaza. Um, and... <laughs> I, like immediately, like I I don't know, like and now I, I'm hoping if you're listening to this or if you follow me or anything like that, that you are aware of the genocide happening in Gaza right now um, because of Israel, and I, I hope you are aware of that, and because. There is just so much information spewing everywhere, and it is being very well documented um, in in massive detail. We're we're seeing so much about this entire thing, and it's been like that. Now, this is a conflict that that has spread um, a lot longer than um, most people have been aware of it recently you know most people have only known about you know the little tension uh, between israel and gaza uh, since like october when you know things went went down on that day and um but you know this 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 whole thing has gone on a lot longer <laughs> than the past few months and i'm not here to give a, a, a history lesson on the conflict um but it, it is something that has been going on for a very long time. And what has happened in the last few months is just incredibly disheartening. Um, you know, uh, in case you're wondering, uh, you know, free, free Palestine, that's, that's, my, that's my stance in case uh, you need me to say it. Um, but yeah... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I definitely don't think we sh uh, there should be a mass genocide of the Pal Palestinians happening right now. Um, this whole thing has been it, it, unbelievable, I guess. I, I guess it's it's just it's just crazy how well it's been documented versus the action taken to stop it. And by action taken, I mean inaction because um, America and other countries are willingly funding all of this violence happening and 
it's crazy. And in this situation right now, I think a lot of Americans, I'm only going to speak on behalf of Americans because I'm an American. I don't know the experience of other people in other countries. Um, but, you know, as an American watching all of this unfold and, you know, just kind of realizing that, wow, a lot of that is happening because our money is being sent to fund uh, another person's military or we're sending weapons to another country so they can use them on this huge act of violence against these people for no justified reason other than to be evil, really. There really is no justified reason for any of this happening. And it's just so much information coming out. Like, like I said earlier, this has been well documented and um, it has made social media a very dodgy place because you can see crazy shit on the internet right now, um, immediately. And that is good um, because it means the people in Palestine and Gaza are able to document everything happening and that people are able to see firsthand like the things that are being done um, and they're they're not able to, you know, these big government organizations aren't able to lie to people um, because that's that has definitely been a thing in the past where similar things to this have happened and you know uh, you know big government people aren't gonna tell their citizens the truth and they're gonna cover it up with something and then we find out years later that you know it's a whole. <laughs> What we were led to believe wasn't true even in the slightest. And so, you know, the, this whole thing has been well documented by various people. And, um, you know, there's just so much to see. There's just every, you know, every time you, you're refreshing the timeline on something, you're going to see something about Palestine or, or Gaza or something like that. And that's good. Um, it's good to see all that. But a trend that I'm noticing is just kind of, and I feel like this is more so a thing on Twitter. I don't know about, I, I don't think so much TikTok and Instagram. There's a lot of stuff on, on those sites. Um, but I feel like a lot of the quote unquote chaos that I am seeing from people is happening on Twitter. Um, which I guess kind of makes sense because that's just, Twitter's kind of the wild west of the internet right now because nothing on it works the way it should and um, there's no such thing as, as content filters or anything like that on Twitter. Like, none of that is, like, actually real. That's all, like, behind a paywall, basically. And, um... What, what I'm noticing is people are posting a lot about, you know, the conflict and, and all the stuff and resources to help Palestinians and all that stuff is great. But I think a big issue is that people are seeing all of this too often. And so because they're saturating themselves in, in, in immersing themselves in all of this violence and like these horrible acts um, all of the time, it's turning people very hostile towards one another, even against people who share the same ideals that they do and want the same things that they do. Um, that's something I've noticed quite a bit. Um, just because someone is not trying to support the Palestinians in the same way that another person is. So it's a lot of like kind of policing people's um, contributions or, or what ha are trying to, or what they're trying to contribute uh, to the cause. And I feel like that's doing kind of a lot of damage to the cause, um, but also just to people's like well-being. Um, you know, I think it, it's great to be invested. It's great to interact and engage with all of the posts involving this. I think it's great to be doing that. I think it's important to do that. 
But I also think it's important to not lose yourself in, in that immersion and being inundated with all of this stuff all of the time because when you're surrounded by so much of that hopelessness and that negativity, it can really deter you from, I think, even wanting to try at all to make anything better because you end up just seeing the worst sides of this world. And, you know, at a certain point, you're just like, well, why should I even bother trying to help? Why should I? Is any of this going to do anything? Is any of this going to matter? And I feel like a lot of people have kind of gotten to that point where they're kind of stressing themselves in, in such a capacity where they end up not being able to help as effectively as they could. And I, I, I think moderating what you consume on the internet is so important right now um especially on social media and stuff especially on twitter uh, which is why i'm not really i i kind of ditched it went to blue sky it's just it's just so loud on that particular platform and um you know i'm not trying to remain ignorant or anything like that there's still various ways of getting information about what is happening, you know, in, in Gaza um, from other outlets that are not Twitter. And you can also be informed without subjecting yourself to just all this unimaginable violence that is just happening. Because there's just just evil things and just just horrible things. Like, just horrible things to be looking at. I don't even feel comfortable describing some of it to you guys because it's just, it's all awful and I don't think subjecting yourself to that completely does any good to to help these people. I don't think it, I don't think it's a thing where you need because I think some people feel like they need to suffer in some capacity because they feel bad that all of these other people are suffering so much. And I can kind of get that sentiment because you you know you kind of want to be empathetic and stuff. But you also need to think about your well-being and what, how you are functioning in the real world because you have to keep functioning in in your day-to-day -day life. You know, nothing... As much as we all just kind of want to stop everything we're doing and just being like, yo, what the fuck is this? Stop it. You know, um, some people are doing that with, like, protesting and boycotting and stuff like that. Like... And, and that's working, but the reality is I don't think <laughs> we're getting everyone on that, on that page, you know? So while it's insane, you know, it, it's, I'm not saying it's normal or, or good or anything like that. It's insane that, you know, in, in our day-to-day -day life, you know, we're all still like going to school, going to work and all this stuff while all of these atrocities are happening because because of our country, basically. Um, it feels wrong to do that, for sure. But it's important to remember that because we're here and not there right now, we have the power to, like, enact change. And we can be... We can be the voices of, of those people or, or, or be stewards to those people and help them, even from, like, far away. And, and different people are going to be able to contribute in different ways. You know, like I was saying earlier about people policing people's contributions to the cause. You can't do that. You can't worry about what other people are, are doing or if they have a platform or what they're doing with that platform. You can't control what people are going to do. You, you just can't. As much as you think you can, like, cyberbully someone into, into doing something, you can't. You can't do... You cannot control how people will, will react to something, how people will, will contribute to something. You, you simply cannot. So I think it's important to just recognize what you're doing and, or what you're not doing. Recognize what you're not doing and try to contribute in ways 
that are good for you and that are that are meaningful to you um whether that be you know you know a lot of people like just share stuff on on the internet and then you just don't talk to anyone in real life and when you talk to someone in real life you know a lot of times they're not aware of of a lot of what is happening because you know i think a lot of people get so immersed in social media culture um, and people in circles where, you know, they have a lot of friends that are on the internet and not in real life. They just kind of think that's how everyone operates. And f- social media for a lot of people is not something they use really regularly. A lot of people still just hang out with their immediate circle of friends in real life. And so I think it's important to recognize that just because you're retweeting and reposting and doing a bunch of shit like that doesn't mean it's actually getting to the people that you know in real life. So I think it's also important to have real conversations with these people and not don't yell at them, don't tell them, you know, because yelling yelling at someone is never going to do anything. It's going to immediately shut down any kind of conversation that you were going to have you know so i think it's important to recognize that and just have honest conversations and like actually share what is happening with people and and try to come up with ways to just help in real life i i don't think um i i I don't think people should be subjecting themselves for the sake of making themselves suffer because you aren't suffering right now. And so because you're not suffering, you have a really great opportunity to be helpful uh, for these people and in this time. So you should take advantage of that. So that's what I wanted to talk about tonight. I will be linking to a couple of things. Uh, I'm going to be linking to a person who has been documenting uh, the entire conflict in Gaza uh, from the Palestinians' perspective. Her name is Bassan. Uh, She's been covering it since it started. And um, I think if you are still, if you've still been unaware of what has been happening, I think that's a good place to start with her. Um, because she has been on the ground and reporting on everything happening over there. And I think that's just a good starting point for anyone trying to understand uh, what exactly is happening over there. I'm also going to be linking to a thing called eSIMS for Gaza, which is a resource uh, that provides uh, electronic SIM cards uh, to the people in Gaza, so that way they are able to continue documenting what is happening right now because I think that's one of the um, important parts of one of, one of the most um, important parts of right now is making sure everything is documented so we can try and never have this happen again um, and and that's all I feel comfortable with linking to um i don't want to link to a bunch of twitter threads because um you know if i'm telling you to like not go on twitter so much i I don't feel comfortable linking you to twitter so just know that there are resources out there and they're really not that hard that hard to find those are just two really good places to start and um i i really think people are able to contribute in some form in any form you know and recognize that the way you're contributing may not be some big public type of thing. I think people feel a lot of pressure because of social media. If they have an online presence, they feel like if they're doing something that's, you know, like morally good, then they should be posting about it. Sometimes that's not always the case. Sometimes you're just doing a good thing and just living your life. And I think that's fully appropriate. You know, remember you don't owe anyone on the internet an explanation for anything you do. Um, Especially if if you know that you're doing your best to help people. I hope you guys um, take it easy. Be, you know, be kind to yourselves. Um, I understand 
a lot of this is overwhelming, it, you know, and you can feel very powerless. But just recognize that because of the position that you're in right now, and because you you aren't them, and that sounds really fucked up when I say it, because, well, because, I mean, the whole thing is fucked up. But, I mean, recognize that because you're here and not there, you're able to do so much. And um, even something very small does a lot. And I'm, I'm a firm believer in that, that even little things, they, they add up, you know, because because this movement has been really inspiring because there's been so much, you know, understanding that, you know, people just need to help, um, you know, whether that be boycott a business or protest or something like that. Um, you know, boycotting is a good way to start. If you haven't already started boycotting like Starbucks or McDonald's, those are two great places to start. Just don't go there anymore. Um, and th those companies have noticed, you know, that I, and I know it, it seems weird because like, I, I don't know about you guys, but s the, some of the Starbucks lines are still pretty long, but I have never seen Starbucks trying to advertise so hard before. Uh, before the this boycott happened and I think that is a sign that what people are doing with boycotts is working so I think that's a good place to start um, you know recognize the you know the things going on with those businesses you know think about what you're spending money on and how those play into everything that's happening you know really really think about your day-to-day -day and how that affects what is happening and it just if you just make small little adjustments, um, I think you'll find that you can actually be a big help to, to the cause right now. So, again, thank you all for tuning in tonight. Thank you all so much for, um, you know, bearing with me and listening to me. I appreciate it, as always. And I will see you next time for another Friday Night Show.